Estamos todos disfrutando de las vacaciones y todavía falta para que vuelvan las clases. Pero siempre hay maestros dando vueltas en la NBA. Hoy, como cada semana, asistimos a la cátedra de nuestro profe favorito. Kevin Durant vuelve a la universidad y aunque no lo hace para estudiar, el instituto estará más que agradecido. Siempre hay que salir al cole desayunado, por eso Bogdan Bogdanovich te cuenta qué elige al levantarse. Se jugó el día Martin Luther King y dos de los Minnesota Timberwolves reflexionan sobre lo que aprendieron de este líder. Como se cansa de meter puntos, Devin Booker prueba su suerte en otro deporte. ¿Podrá recibirse de golfista? Si no te das mucha maña con las redes sociales, Goran Dragic te enseña cómo podés aprovecharlas. Y como siempre hay un payaso en el curso, el griego Anteto Cumpo se hace una escapada para jugarle una broma a uno de sus compañeros. Dale que ya suena la chicharra y comienza la clase acá en Generación NBA. El mejor básquet del mundo visto con ojos argentos. En el arranque de la semana argenta, Manu no brilló, pero igual se las arregló con 8 puntos en 17 minutos para volver a estar en boca de todos. San Antonio venció a un rival incómodo como los Denver Nuggets con autoridad. Fue un contundente 113-80 con otra jugada de Ginobili que dio la vuelta al mundo. La volcada del pibe de 40 fue tremenda. Los Spurs tenían otro lindo partido en la visita a Atlanta, pero las cosas se pusieron feas demasiado pronto. Apenas dos minutos después de salir del banco, Ginobili chocó su rodilla con la de su ex compañero, de Wayne Dedmon, y aunque intentó seguir en la cancha, supo que algo andaba mal y pidió el cambio. Manu se fue directamente al vestuario tras jugar apenas cinco minutos y dar una asistencia. Y el primer diagnóstico, todavía en casa de los Hawks, fue una contusión en el muslo. Sin el argentino, San Antonio igual dio pelea, aunque terminó cayendo con lo justo, 102 a 99. La dolencia sufrida contra Atlanta dejó a Ginobili afuera del partido con Brooklyn, aunque los Spurs igualmente hicieron valer su jerarquía ante uno de los equipos de fondo. Con 34 puntos de la Marcos Aldrich y 25 de Patty Mills, San Antonio ganó sin mayores complicaciones, 100 a 95. Pese a la enorme campaña que se hizo en Argentina, Manu no pudo entrar al Juego de las Estrellas como titular. Quedó segundo entre los votos del público, pero al promediar ese resultado con los de la elección de jugadores y periodistas, finalizó cuarto. Los perimetrales del oeste que se ganaron el lugar fueron Steph Curry y James Harden. Ahora queda esperar que lo elijan los entrenadores como suplente. Hi Heat fans, my name is Goran Dragic and welcome to second edition of my social media profile. It was really busy summer. I posted a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, um, how we celebrate the title, how we spent um, every day on the European Basketball Championship and, uh, you know, it was fun. Uh, 25,000 people showed up and they were really excited and, um, you know, as a professional athlete, this is something that you're always dreaming as a kid to bring back a trophy and to celebrate with your countrymen. It means a lot, uh, you know, especially, um, you know, JJ, Jay Rich, UD, um, you know, they always have been supportive of me and it's always nice to see that they are following your game, especially when I'm not playing with, with those guys. I follow them the same, what they're doing in off season and um, it's fun because you can, you can keep in touch. She gave me a Drajan Petrovic jersey, um, And she said that I lead my country like um, her son would, Drajan, and um, you know that was really emotional. Then uh, when I found out that she's gonna come to Slovenia, um, to you know to be on some TV show, I said that I need to, I need to give her my jersey, and uh, I did that. So it was it was uh, awesome. So the book is is called The Legend of the Dragon. It's just uh, inside just cool stories about the basketball stuff playing with the dragons and have fun. You know, I got two, two really young kids. This was my goal someday to write something. I came in touch with some people 
who makes the fairy tales and uh, we work together and um, in the end this came out. It means a lot, uh, you know, he helped me a lot when I came to the heat and uh, you know, he's a, a true example of, of our captain, Mr. 305. He's been here for 14 years and um, you know, everybody's listening, he's our leader and um, it's, it's nice to have him here. You can follow me on um, social media like uh, Instagram, the one dragon or Twitter account um, at Goran underline Draghi. Got you going first. Me first? Yeah, that's what it says. What target are we going for? What? Okay, I can't even do stuff like that. Oh, okay. Well, he's good at this. You ever golf? Do you go with your teammates and play? Top golf. So you're not an actual like golfer. I've golfed probably twice. Um, I like riding the carts more than anything. Oh, you don't even use the tee. You don't use the tee with this club. Okay. I don't think well, so. I've been golfing for about 11 total minutes. Okay, that was a practice swing. I was just... You edit that out. Oh, that was 12 points, wow. Another good one. Uh-oh. Struggling. Almost. Nope, that's not getting it. This is actually yeah. far more competitive than I thought it would be. You've golfed before, she's lying. It's the biggest shot of my golf career. Six points, 100 exactly. 100 exactly, all hey. right, my rope cage. That went a lot better than I thought it was gonna go. 68. You scored more than that in a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I play basketball. Devin Booker, oh man. You know, it's like you're at the gas station and you're just watching the price go up and up. I mean, he can't miss. All right, so this is the guy that can score the basketball. Just does get it off and buries it. Booker at D3. Well, he will pull up till next week. What are the day-to-day -day challenges of having such a young roster? You know, I don't think there's many teams with 19, 20, 21-year-olds that are playing as many minutes as we are. Crunch time, part of the games, lay down the stretch, competing against those guys. I've been playing with each other five to 10 years. You know, they have the advantage on us. Has it given you, though, an opportunity to step into a leadership role? It does. At the same time, being a leader, and then I'm still figuring out what I'm trying to do. I'm caught in the middle right now, but trying to work on it, leading by example, bringing energy, you know, the things that I can control. Up ahead to Booker. Booker turns, fires, got it! High and hits it at the buzzer. Juzan! See the defensive attention that the Lakers are paying. Booker doesn't matter. Oh, brother. It's your third season already. Third season. At the age of 21. Just turned. You start to feel old or like a veteran yet? Um, kind of. You know, I was thrown in the fire since my rookie year. I had a chance to play. And once I got out there, you know, I didn't want to ever look back. So ever since then, I've been getting experience, been playing a lot, starting games. So you know, I have my feet under me a little bit. At what point did you realize that you really could do this at a high level? You know, I go out there competing against the top guys in the league that, you know, I used to study their film, watch all their games. And now I'm going against these guys. So, you know, I didn't want to think too much of it. You know, I just wanted to have fun with it. And once I started having fun, the game slowed down for me, and I was like, you know, I belong in this league. You mentioned that you just turned 21. I took it upon myself to actually get you a present. Uh-oh. A cake and a birthday card. And a birthday card? It's all happening. OK. OK, hang on. Oh, they're going to bring it. Watch. It's I'm excited. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. microphone on, so I'm the only one that they're going to hear. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, this is I'd this like is you to read the card aloud. Read the card. Yes. I'm really excited about this. I know. my best birthday gift, yeah. honestly. Do you want to blow out your candle, too? Oh, OK. I'm going to make a wish first. Yeah. What'd you wish for? Hey, hey, can't tell you. Can't tell you. You know that. It's fair. Happy birthday from all of us. Except Grant. Happiest of birthdays, my little Phoenix son, Kristen. <laughs> Not Grant. 
That's good, right? Hey, I appreciate that. Happy birthday. Thank you. You're oh. welcome. Oh. I appreciate it. All done. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? I already ordered my breakfast. Uh, I like to eat in my room. So what I have right here is sunny side, two eggs. It, it's typical American breakfast, right? This is what I usually wear uh, when it's the winter. The high top shoes, uh, they're really comfortable. Uh, hot inside and, you know, this one are <laughs> for, for breakfast, let's say, breakfast shoes. <laughs> Here is uh, what I have next to me, when the phone, charger, Rubik's Cube, um, some water, uh, but Rubik's Cube before I, I go to sleep, I like to solve it a couple times and be ready for, for, for a good nap. Sacramento. Really one, one, one of the best fans in, uh, in NBA for sure. Uh, now that I had experienced some arena, I can see that, uh, I can see the different energy in our arena and they just like, like basketball, they're, they're, they're awesome. Durbin, the Iceman, the Iceman does it all. Here comes Durbin, the Iceman, driving it. I, mean, I have my own style, man. I mean, on the floor, off the floor. Iceman drives for the hoop. Isn't that pretty? I was about 175 pounds. Didn't sweat very much. It's the feeling that the Iceman is starting to warm up. They would just start calling me Ice. The Iceman. How smooth. That is poetry in motion. More people know me by Iceman than they do George Gervin, and it's still a part of my identity today. Magic Johnson! Look at Magic. Magic gets another assist. Magic changed the game of point guards in basketball history. He loved to pass. It is showtime. Magic made everybody around him better. Oh, nice play. Magic stepped that up all the way. Magic is perfect for him. I really like the gloves. Gary Payton, they call him the glove. Gary Payton to stop you. Man, what a move by the glove. And talk stuff. Actuate that one out of here, boy. Payton with the steal, puts it down. I mean, he'll look at you like, what you want? We coming, dog, me and you. So Gary was one of my favorite, too, and the glove was a good nickname for him. The glove fits tonight. <laughs> a thick follow metal. He definitely was follow metal. Fundamental, again using glass. Wasn't nothing exciting about Tim but championships. The third NBA World Championship. He knew how to win. Don't call him the big oh. fundamental for nothing. <laughs> so I think that's a good nickname for him. Answer great. I mean, because, you know, everybody talk about me having folks going tight. They forget he has also four. He is the answer, and he has the answer. As little as he was, I mean, he had an answer for you. I like that. The answer with an answer. One more time for the base. King. King James. He grew into the king. You know, I thought he was a prince at first. I thought he got the king name a little too early. And one for the king. But now I think he's really a king. James LeBron, you deserve that king name, buddy. The unveiling of the Kevin Durant Texas Basketball Center, part of a very special day here in Austin, Texas, as there was a reception and a program celebrating KD's time here with the Longhorns program in Austin and why the time meant so much to his basketball career and why paying it forward is so important. Let's listen in to some of the program. Ten plus years ago that we were here and I was a student athlete and I'm coming from Maryland. I've never been to Texas before. I didn't know anybody here. But as soon as I got off the plane, um, I felt right at home. It was something I was always searching for as a basketball player, as a group of guys that reminded me of my first team I ever played on. And that first team I ever played on is the reason why I still play basketball. 
walking into this practice facility, it wasn't even about basketball because I could have played basketball just about anywhere. It was about the culture that was set from TJ Ford, the reason why I wanted to come to Texas. Well, the second reason, the first is because Coach Barnes told me I could shoot whenever I wanted to when I came. <laughs> but seeing TJ become a player of the year and make it to the NBA and go to the Final Four and just build that brotherhood with these guys. Let's keep impacting lives, let's keep changing lives, and let's keep building this program to where it should be. And I feel like that's the best program in the country. So thank you guys for everything. I appreciate it. Is it pop or soda? I'm going to go with soda. Where's the best place for a first date? I'm going to go a helicopter ride, dinner. Aggressive, Eric. OK. It's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Either going to be with me or you got to jump. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Your first job was working at a coffee shop. Can you name the ingredients in a caramel macchiato? I cannot. What do you think is the greatest invention of all time? The greatest invention of all time is the telephone. What's the most difficult strength and conditioning exercise you've participated in? I got a lot of them, man, but I'm gonna just go with the three minute run. What's better, going to a restaurant or takeout? Takeout. Who is the funniest person on this team? It's Kyle O'Quinn. Is artificial intelligence a good thing for society? I think so. Do you? <laughs> I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. MLK Day is a special day because it shows unity, courage, strength, and a man who uh, wanted the equality for every one of us, not only just for uh, African Americans, but for all races, and for him to uh, put his life on the line for his cause of what he truly believes in shows a, a courage and a strength that a lot of us don't have and needs to be recognized. That he was doing things with no agenda. It wasn't for just one particular uh, race or, or one particular uh, gender. It was for everybody. And he had this vision a long, long, long time ago. So for me, I thought he was one of the best leaders in American history, period, for that reason. He understood the, how to talk to people, communication with people, psychology of people, and the biggest thing is he had a message that was different than everyone else was saying. You know, everyone was speaking of violence and he was speaking about peace and peaceful uh, protests. So uh, Martin Luther King uh, spread a new word that resonated with a lot of people and uh, made people understand that violence is not the only way. Yeah, some of the lessons I learned watching uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was that you just have to put other people before you put yourself. Like, some of the things he said he knew he could end up killed or in, in jail or anything, but that didn't stop his movement, that didn't stop his message. And uh, as you see, we're still here talking about him today and hopefully we'll be here talking about him for eternity. He hammers it. Hey everybody, welcome to 24 Seconds with me, Anthony Davis. The biggest momentum shifter in the game is when someone's getting dumped on, post arrives. 18. Get out of the way. The funniest guy on my team is by far DeMarcus Cousins. You gotta, you just gotta be with him to, to understand what I'm saying. But he, trust me, he's he's funny. That's a wrap. I'm out. That's no one's coming. I told him he cannot be ducking on foul like that. You know, uh, it's something called karma. You know, you're gonna get get it back. So we got a little surprise for Sterling Brown. We got some popcorn in his car. You guys stay tuned. It's gonna be fun. Good. Come on. Good. 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 I need some towers in my seats every game, after every game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, let's get something, do something. Let's get something. Let's get something. Let's get something. Oh, yeah. God, Lee, you over there eating. I'm trying to help you get it out of your car, bro. That's crazy. Oh wow. Y'all 
can at least help if y'all gonna stand around. Hey, no. No, we not having the rookie. Damn, bro. Bro, how can you put so much smoke in the car, bro? Yeah. What do you gotta say about this, bro? My car is a dealership right now. Yeah. I ain't getting it until next year. <laughs> you know who it was, man. It was Kate Mid. It's all good. He's he been saying he gonna give me back, but... They ain't have to do the popcorn. They, they could have did fruit snacks. They could have did something else, man. The popcorn, I'm on his head now. Y'all see all this popcorn, man? Rookies, I can't wait till my rookies come in. Ooh, I can't wait. This is crazy. Welcome to Mavs Trivia, where we test the players' knowledge of their teammates and their franchise. To my left, we have the 20-year veteran, Dirk Nowitzki, and to my right, we have the rookie, Dennis Smith Jr. We're playing the opposite of horse, so if you get one right, you get a correct letter. You're trying to spell Mavs, so you need four correct. Are you guys ready? Done. First question, what year did the Mavericks become a franchise? Dirk Nowitzki. 1980. 1980 is the correct Booyah! Answer. You get an M, we're trying to spell Mavs. <laughs> Second question, what is Yogi Ferrell's real first name? Kevin. Oh, Kevin yes. is the correct yes. Do you have to wait till you say the whole question? Don't have, oh, okay. No. If he knows what's coming, okay. he has okay. a chance to answer. We got M to M. What former Mav went on to become a movie producer? Michael, Michael Finley is the How'd correct answer. How'd you know that so answer. quick? They already told you what the correct answer is. He mad. He mad. He, 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 he didn't even say rookie. movie producer. He already hit the button. That is yeah, true. He did. M A for the rookie. Okay. The veteran has an M. We're trying head. to spell math. Next question. Which current math was the number one high school prospect in 2012 by ESPN and Scout.com? Dennis Smith. 2012. 2012. Merlin's Noel is the correct answer. M A B to M. <laughs> Dennis Smith Jr. is ahead. Both of you guys should know the answer to this one. Okay. What musical instrument does Coach Carlisle play? What light? Judges say yes. <laughs> the piano. The piano is correct. M A B to M A. Dennis Smith is still ahead. He needs one more letter to win the competition. What musical instrument does Harrison Barnes play? I know our first on that one. Sex. Saxophone is the correct answer. I didn't know so Wookie so takes down a 20-year veteran. Dirk, what do you think? Congrats. Yes. Uh, I need to do more research on my on my do mouse. More research. <laughs> Dennis, how does it feel to take down a veteran in this game? I feel like a bit. <laughs> well, we appreciate like both of you guys for playing Mavs trivia. Pero qué haces? No me agarres. No ves que me quieren ver las 10 mejores. Estoy desesperado. Déjame verlas tranquilos, salí. A ver si te calmas con este balonazo. Muchachos, tranquilos. Muchachos, no es para tanto, viejo. Pueden no gustarle los puestos que elegimos, pero eso es cuestión de los productores. Tampoco se maten. Mejor vamos a lo nuestro antes que se pudra todo. En el 10 en Toronto hace bastante frío, pero el público hierve por estos dos. Lucas Nogueira te pone la tapa y Norman Powell la asegura a martillazos. En la 9 le abren el camino al paso del rey. Aunque estos no lo hacen por protocolo, ¿eh? si no se corre el Lebrón, los destroza. ¿Hay promo en el supermercado? Porque en la 8, Anthony Davis mete un hermoso 2 and 1 en quiebres de cintura. En el 7, Wesley Johnson le corta el mambo. Al de los Clippers no le gusta el canto y menos a Capela. En el 6 hay luz verde para los Cavaliers. Wade se mete por la avenida y Green lo acompaña a pura máquina. En la 5 no será chocolate blanco Williams, pero... Los Knicks tienen al chocolatín Jared Jack, que siempre trae una sorpresa. En la número 4, Durantula intimida al rey. Uh, uy, uy. 
Lebron no quiso ni cruzarse en el camino de Kevin para no caer en su tela araña. Salí de acá. En la 3, Lauri sí está. Lauri no se fue. Marcanen no se esconde y te tira el camión encima. El del puesto 2, si no va al All-Star, no se hace problema. Lonzo Ball lleva el juego de las estrellas al Staples Center. A Julius Randle le gustó más el pase que a mí el dulce de leche. Y en la número uno, vos sos muy bueno, Lauri, pero acá, acá mando yo. Volcada y buzzer beater, erótico combo de un Krista Porzingis que mandó a la escuela a Marcanen. Nos vamos despidiendo, pero antes del final te contamos a vos, arroba J Mastro Stefano, que te ganaste la spoiling de esta semana, viejo. Para los demás, hay revancha, claro. Seguinos, retuiteanos y usa el hashtag de siempre, numeral generación NBA. En el próximo programa te contamos si se te dio. Que tengan una gran semana, amigos.